Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com. Uh, well, doing different videos, trying to come up with since I, I can do a video today. And I've been kind of waiting to show a couple of vinyl records that I picked up. Um, it's like a couple of weeks ago. It was like, it's a couple, it was, I don't know, it was like two weeks ago or whatever. Um, and Black Friday, Records Store Day, of course, is coming up. But there's nothing really on the list that I'm all that interested. There's a few things my wife's interested in, um, namely Fountains of Wayne, Fountains of Wayne album and um, Madonna and was it Chris Isaac. I can't remember, but yeah, my my record store day was basically getting um, that Jellyfish box set and uh, I showed a few weeks ago. So I just found a few records at the store that will show. And I just listened to this. So the first one is, and I'm almost certain if, you know, that I never, I didn't buy this previously, but I know this was, this is not a first pressing. This is a re reissue or repressing. I want to get the little sleep of the Saigon kick self-titled debut album. As it says on here, this is in, yeah. This is kind of screwed up though, what this says. Must have been on different labels because this is 88, but I guess it was 91. Yeah, I guess it was 91. Okay, so Spotify has some information. Maybe some of the singles came out before that. Um, I didn't, I'm pretty sure I, I bought the, li the Lizard came out. The Lizard or Lizard, I forget what it's on. Both, those are the two albums that are on Spotify. Um, it's The Lizard. Yeah, this says 88. So I don't, I mean, I know Saigon Kick, but um, I'm just going to just clarify. I thought I actually opened, I did open up their Wikipedia page, and I should know this history. It was 91, so I don't know why Spotify says it was 88. Um, maybe it was independently released, and then they shopped it around and got released. This was on Atlantic, so a couple imprints uh third stone records and real gone music not for this reissue maybe um this is deep purple it's in purple and produced by michael wagner who did work with king's x in the in the 2000s um yeah february 12th 1991 so i don't know why the information that was put on spotify is so off by a couple of years but whatever i have to go to disc i'm not gonna do that right now so let's just show it and um i haven't listened to this album in many years i have it on cd and i might i had the lizard and i had water on cassette i know but um yeah this is a deep purple or whatever it's a purple it's kind of cool now that's interesting because it's got the atlantic label that looks like a first pressing of course this might not come out purple the way it looks with the lighting in here but it is purple <laughs> Hold it up to the light. So, um, it's, I've never favored this record. Although, like, when I was starting to buy vinyl more regularly, I mean, before I met my wife, I only bought a little bit of vinyl, but, um, I rarely would go down to, like, the basement at Cheapo and look for vinyl. Once in a blue moon, but, but when I, when I started to, and then I wanted to see, well, there's records that I like that are, that, that were issued on vinyl, and, Tiger Kicks were, was one of the bands, and I still continue to look for them in Sabotage, under the S section, and there's a couple others um, that had vinyl records. Galactic Cowboys was another one that at least had one or two, and this was one of them. And I, you know, and that's the thing I'm wondering. I might have found without artwork, possibly even the an original first pressing from 1991. But if not, you know, this version that came out in 2021. I, I'm almost certain I didn't buy. I did buy the Lizard and Records today. Uh, it was like last year, 2021, I think it was. They need to issue uh, Devil in the Details and Water. Um, they have another record that I, you know, I didn't realize. They, I always thought that for the longest time, I always had the, the feeling, because I got like some sort of B-side bootleg compilation thing. But um, they actually, there's a bonus track on here, Hey, 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 that I don't know if I've ever heard. They have another, they have an album that features backing vocals from Jeff Scott Soto. Interesting. Um, they have a, an album they released after, it was called Bastards. Was that it? No, that's the one I had. Moment on, Moments from the Fringe. I think that's it. Yeah. 
and I'm totally guilty of this. Um, is that the one? Or is it the Bastards record? This is a Saigon demo compilation. Well, yeah, I don't. Yeah, this, this that's that's not it. So it really would be Bastards. Man, I guess that's the one. And I thought I actually had this on CD. I found, but anyway, I've, I'm not very familiar with that one. The other ones, at least, I'm relatively familiar. But this album, the self-titled debut album from Saigon Kick, it's you know, it it, it definitely. I want to say it was their my least favorite. I guess you could say my least favorite Saigon Kick album. Um, a little more raw, raw, or not the best way to put it of the time so it was 91 i'm thinking it was 88 but you know still of that kind of hair metal era um pop hair metal but there's some good songs on it it's spotty you know i think you know and matt kramer's the lead singer uh he did not lead sing on my favorite album from the devil in the details it's interesting how jason beeler did that but um yeah i mean i've just going over it the songs what you say was the single that's the most well-known track on here. I think there was a video or two for one video for that. Colors, um, uh, down by the ocean, acid rain. Acid rain just a small, like, like a short one one half minute track. And then uh, my life is kind of almost Beatles ish. Um, and then come take me now. It's weird listening to come take me now. Sounded a, a bit like and I was thinking it was eighty eight, but it was ninety one the song from the church uh under the milky way not all of it but part of it's like in the same key it's it's weird i almost want to like listen to it and listen to it back to back with it um Susie's okay also the opening track new world it's a it's a it's a reasonable debut album but it's common among debut albums being a debut album in that it's not it's some of the songs just aren't that great and they're kind of de how do they derivative that, it was the kind of the hair metal, the pop hair metal, but of course Jason Beeler now is doing some Prague stuff. He was influenced by Prague, and you know you hear it more in some of their later albums. They did a cover of David Bowie's um, "Space Oddity." Uh, I think it's on, I think it's on Water, but I forget. It's either Water or or Lizard, but um, the Lizard. But yeah, so this is that you know Matt Kramer, Jason Beeler, Phil Verone, Tom Defile. And interesting, I noticed how. Their touring drummer is Jonathan Mover, so who's also heading that prog jack covers band with a lot of modern, like Rio Okamoto from Spock Spears in it and stuff like that. They do a lot of classic prog, but Jonathan Mover also was drum for Marillion briefly before it was before Ian Mosley joined, but after um, Mick Pointer had left. So, so the only other record I got that it was like the same day, and unfortunately, um, I I didn't. I mean, I paid a reasonable price for it, but um, in retrospect, I probably should have held out a little bit. But, you know, I bought it from a store I really like, um, Barely Brothers, and I haven't been there in a while. Only maybe once or twice since COVID. So the um, uh, Esperanza Spalding album uh, from 2016, Emily's D Plus Evolution, which I guess you could say in some ways was her first quote-unquote prog album, because most of her stuff... But, previously and the one that she got like the grammy for best new artist and or debut it wasn't debut she got a grammy around the time was more and that's up before that more traditional jazz um and like the one i other one i bought that experimental album was yeah more like wasn't singer songwriter but it wasn't as progressive 12 little spells i have in the other room that those are the two i'm you know she did an album i think put out an album last year i never listened to and again it was more traditional like post bop or whatever she's an artist that she kind of genre bends because sometimes she's doing pop music sometimes she's doing r&b or soul music and sometimes she's doing jazz and then sometimes she's doing just a mixture and it's kind of progressive uh and this album i think I go back and forth, and I haven't... I was revisiting some of this the other day. I was like, oh, yeah. It's like, what's the track? Judas. Judas and Earth to Heaven. The, the, the end of side A on this album. But I was just getting at... It's like, I should have... I maybe should have waited and buy it. Because there's, there's a slight scratch on this. But, you know, this is a, a relatively new record I found used, which doesn't happen very much. Um, but, yeah, there's... I don't know if you can even see it on here. But one of the sides has... A little bit, yeah. This one, the it's side side A, um, for the beginning. 
has a couple couple fingerprints and, and scratch. The other side looks more or less fine. But um, I need to revisit this. I mean, Esperanza Spaulding, I'm totally guilty. I've never seen her live. And I liked her al this album, and I liked 12 Little Spells the year they came out. It, that other one, experimental record, too. But I, but I didn't, you know, I haven't gone back to them when I need to. Um, but um, and I think especially with the direction that Janelle Monet has taken, and you could even say maybe Kimra to an extent, um, she's kind of been my <laughs> token go to and i mean she actually played on janelle's album the electric lady uh, she's an upright she plays bass upright bass mostly but um songwriter too of course as from the spalding so yeah i mean she's a uh, on like a, a relatively short list of um of artists that i've i really want to see live but i have yet to um and i worry that i i have not gotten to see her sort of in this era when she was really doing more of the progressive stuff but, you know, she's a progressive artist. She'll do something else I'll probably love, and then I'll be like, I'm glad I saw that. So I guess she headlined uh, the Twin Cities Jazz Festival. Ooh, there's a, an insert here. Um, I want to say like 20, maybe 2017. That's what um, Paul from, um, I think it was Agarda, yeah, told me uh, when I was looking for this. They didn't have, they had 12 little spells, which I have. I think I showed. But, um, yeah, Esperanza. So, um... And then I was, tomorrow, Dredge, there's going to be a big announcement about this Dredge. Um, that's the other big piece of news. It's tomorrow. Today is Jeff Buckley, or would have been Jeff Buckley's 56th birthday. Um, although, you know, I know it's the 17th of November every year. It's fun that people have birthdays today, but um, Kevin Gilbert's 20, 56th would have been on Sunday, so that's sort of Kevin's day. Um, but yeah, Dredge is Dredge Vault, I guess. They're going to make an announcement. I don't know what time exactly tomorrow, but my guess is it's going to be like a book or something. A book and some other stuff, maybe. Maybe a DVD or a download or something. You know, they've been working on this for quite a while. They're also working on a new album, potentially a double or two albums, you know. and every The guys all have day jobs now. They're not devoting 100% of their time to Dredge. And then with factoring COVID and some other things, they weren't going to just release it. I mean, it'd be nice... It would have been nice if they could have thrown a bone. I mean, Dino's put stuff on Instagram, some clips and some... But just to get some of these people off the back that, of these doubters that keep on saying, you know, this is just Boy Who Cried Wolf, you know. Um, but tomorrow, hopefully, the, the book itself or whatever this dredge vault that's going to be, be being made and released. Um, we just did get the, the LCLO uh, anniversary vinyl pre-order with the shirt and stuff that's coming next year. Probably be next spring or summer. Like the Let Motif one. So um, I think that's about it. Dead to Me got uploaded to Netflix, you know, and Tina Applegate got her star on the Walk of Fame. She can barely walk, barely stand. Unfortunately, I'm dealing with the same thing with my back problem. I need to see a therapist. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I don't know if the wife will consider she has never watched Dead to Me with me, but um, that was one other thing. But anyway, so if you, what's your take? I should do a Saigon kick. Um, video what's your take on the, the debut i'd like to hear some more opinions about this album i know you know it's like they they evolved to change some of their sound but um i oh um i mentioned the whole i did the whole video the last day or two uploading involving progressive art rock and stuff and i've mentioned the calendar stuff that i wanted to do and then songs of the year might be taking a little change of count of direction in terms of the schedule um I don't know. I mean, I want to do the progressive art rock thing, but the calendar, the albums of the year calendar may take a backseat. I might do songs of the year because the Dream Theater forums. We may, I may just start to to run that. Um, oh, there was one other item. Um, Black Belt Eagle Skull, Catherine Paul, formerly of Forest Park and Genders. That project's her third album's coming out in January. So you know, we're already getting some albums for for January. She just announced the pre-order is already up. There's a couple songs up. She kind of leaning more like a Mazzy Star kind of um, not pure noise, but um, sort of noise noisy. I mean, I think her last record had a lot of sort of staticky distortion at points, and so I'm I'm still looking forward to it. I, I really enjoy the first Black Belt Eagle Skull album, but. Um, 
It's called, it's got just, it's like the, the land, the water, and the skies due on February 10th. You got Kimber's The Reckoning on the 27th, and that on the 10th right now as far as confirmed release dates and stuff like that for stuff I'm looking forward to. But there's a whole boatload of stuff that's going to be coming as well, of course. Um, but yeah, you know, I guess I may be doing Songs of the Year first. I don't know. If I end up doing the Songs of the Year, I'm going to be tempted just to start sharing it on, on YouTube. Um, cause I'll be so consumed by it. I don't know. It's, 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 it's uncertain. Uh, it's a good and bad thing because it's like all these ideas and there's not enough time. And I've meant to do the retro albums of the year for a long time, but one thing at a time, you know, I need to clone myself. So anyway, please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.